them here. Good morning, everybody. All right, like, ser- that's the best you got after three months. Like, seriously? Gosh. You know, you stand up a second, would you, with me? Come on, stand on your feet a second. I know they have, right? Hey, guys, first I want to say thank you for your kindness and your grace. Uh, we've never been in a situation like this in our life, but most people have never had to face something like this. And you have been rock stars. Both of you online and you here in person, you've been rock stars. It talks about us as the kingdom being light in a dark world. And our world is in a dark, dark place right now. And a lot of people are struggling. And you have been rock stars, both how the stuff you say online. Thank you for being Jesus. Thank you for speaking life and hope. Thank you for taking this journey. Our desire is that we would find a way to land this 747. Okay, there's a lot of people who are in different places in reference to what's going on, both those in line, both persons here. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for communicating with one another. Thank you listening to you this morning. Thank you for asking people. I'm a hugger, right? That's just Irish culture. If you don't hug, you're not Irish. But, but one of the things I've learned is we want to help and respect one another. So thank you for asking one another. Thank you for that grace. Thank you for allowing us to do this. I don't like this. I don't like being six feet apart. I don't like that. But here's the thing. A lot of you have commented. The Bible tells us to respect those in authority. And I respect my governor. I pray for him. I contend for him. I stand in a gap for him. I love our community. Our community is about a community that's working and falling forward together. So thank you for allowing us to respect his request. That's what we're doing. We're applying biblical principle. We're going to have an incredible service this morning. I've asked a dear, dear, dear friend of mine to come and walk us into the season that our country is in. My pastor and friend, doctor and pastor, Ron Brown. So would you welcome him this morning? <laughs> worship team, thank you so much for being Heidi, would you pray for us this morning as we enter into worship? And I'd ask you, if you want to stand on your feet, stay stand. If you want to lie down on the floor, lay down, just don't snore. Okay, if you want to sit down and just listen and enjoy it. Whatever posture is comfortable for you right now, please, please do that. But this young lady and this team... I've come this morning to allow us to press the pause button for a second. To allow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to wash us in a fresh way. God says when we, when we stop into his presence, he does amazing things. And so thank you. This morning, guys, thank you for honoring us as we came in. We provided hand cleansing stations to help people in the sense of us coming in. We're going to ask you to leave through the family room and through that way, just out of respect for the whole process. we got a dear young lady, in fact, this young man's wife. He's going to come and help me after the service to figure out how we can move forward. If we have to go to multiple services, and he's going to help me get to a place where we can honestly tell people we have cleansed the building ready for the next group of people. And so we're doing everything we can to honor you and respect you. But thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for joining us on this flight. And the 747 is about to land. So Heidi, pray for us and let's giddy up. Thanks, Rob. I just want to say how happy I am to see all of you. <laughs> as I'm walking, as I'm seeing your faces come in the, in the door, I'm just like, this is like the happiest family reunion ever. And so welcome back. And I'm just over the moon, and I'm going to keep it together so I can sing. Uh, Daddy God, thank you so much that you are here. And you're not here because you live here. You're here because we are here. And thank you for coming into our lives, for coming into our hearts, for lighting us on fire. God, and thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunity to be back together again. And whatever it is that you did while we were apart, um, God, we just pray that you would would have us share it, have us share our hearts, um, be open um, to what you would have for us to hear. We pray that you would empty us of our own selves so that you could fill us with more of you. And we thank you for this opportunity to just celebrate you. Celebrate your goodness in the midst of everything that's happening. It doesn't change who you are. And so we just stand, we kneel, we dance, we praise, and we give our everything to you right now at the foot of the cross that we can just come closer to you. And we pray that every person here will leave here changed in one way or another according to your will, God. We love you so much, Jesus, and we pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Please stay on your feet if you want. We're going to worship.
friend. Hi, Maddie Fair, if you're watching. Say something to me a few years ago, and she said, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear. And that was profound because fear is what drives hate. It's what drives many negative, negative things. And um, I don't think I have to tell you that our country, our world is being driven by fear. Everything that we see, all of the chaos that's going on, it's all fear-driven. But God is love. God is the opposite of that. And, and I think what connects us to that is our faith. And it's only through our faith that we can connect with Jesus and his love and that we can go out and we can be the antidote. We can be different. We can be other. And we do that through, through his perfect love. So I just say, Jesus, it's in your name, in your powerful name that I say that we are not fear-based. We are not driven by fear. We are driven by faith. And because of that, you put your heart in us, and therefore we are driven by love, and love is perfect as yours. So I say, please shower us with love in a way that it will go out outside of us. This isn't for us, God. This is for us to use 
and to be you wherever we go. And so I just pray that you would fill all of our hearts with your love, that we can go out and we can fight this battle because we know all battles are won in your name, Jesus. And we pray in your precious name. Amen.
Would you believe that I, I felt like he wasn't working for a minute? 
I felt it for just a minute, and the minute I pulled into this parking lot, <laughs> he's like, I'm working, see? <laughs> First of all, I just want to say to everyone online, good morning, and I hope you were rocking out and worshiping this morning, because we have a room full of people, and I'm telling you, we were rocking out and worshiping this morning, and so I hope you could hear it at home, because we're thinking of you here, because if you're not here, I know you probably want to be here. Um, Miss Deb Zulam um, wanted to speak for just a moment this morning. A few weeks ago, like pieces of fabric being torn into strips, just being torn apart on every side. I thought, yeah, that that says that. But then I saw God setting down, sewing the strips together. He was mending it. And as I was standing out here, God said, well, who do you think the thread is? We as followers of Jesus Christ, who say we love God, love people, we're the thread he's going to use as we pray and push in and seek him, he's going to mend this thing as we're obedient and loving and kind and we pray for our country and our world. And I hope I'm a bright colored thread. I I love bright colors. So if I can say anything, but the thread makes a difference. The thread holds it together and you're the thread. God wanted me to remind you of that today. And our God works the night shift and the day shift, and he doesn't sleep, and he doesn't slumber. So be encouraged in the Lord, but be loving, kind, and pray, and be the best thread you can be when he's sewing all this up. Good morning. Again, my name is Bridget Larson. I'm a part of the uh, Crossroads Communications team. Woo! (laughs) We're going to go into another type of worship in just a second. I can't help myself. I can't tell you how amazing it is. So those of you online, maybe you don't know this. um, We have three campuses. If those of you that are new today, we have three campuses. And due to everything going on with COVID, We have all three campuses under this roof. And you guys, it is so amazing to see all your faces all under one roof. I mean, forget all the COVID stuff. (laughs) But to see everyone's face worshiping under our same roof all together is just beautiful. And I just hope that maybe we could do that more often (laughs) when we're all back in our separate campuses again. Um, So we're going to move into a different type of worship. uh, And that's receiving the tithe and offering. And so while we're not going to pass around baskets today, there's lots of different ways to give. And just something that kind of came to me this morning um, as I'm preparing, and um, one of my favorite verses that has stuck with me since I was a little girl, my grandfather would take me to church. He'd come pick me up on Sunday mornings if I wanted to go, and he'd take me to church. And Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, cite it with me if you know it, but trust in the Lord with all your heart, Lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And I can tell you, <laughs> my paths have not always been straight. They've looked more like Trapper's Loop or <laughs> Ogden Canyon. But when I acknowledge him in all of my ways, and when I was preparing this morning, again, just trying to um, really pray about how he wanted to use me this morning, it would, that would be all about him. Um, he takes me on down to verse 9 in Proverbs 3. And I don't know this one as well, so I can't cite it as perfectly. Um, 
but he talks about us acknowledging him in all of our wealth. And pastors, you guys can correct me in a minute. Um, and that we would give up our first of our first crops. The first of our first crops. I am nowhere near a pastor. That is not my background by any means. But those are scriptures that I have held on to since I was a little girl. And it just really spoke to me this morning about one, that it would acknowledge him in all of our ways. It's a couple of ways, but in all of our ways. And I've watched people in my family transform with regards to tithe. And it has been beautiful to see people I love so dearly submit completely to the Lord when they're already, com they're already submitting in so many ways the best that they can and to see them submit completely with tithe blows me away. Just know God wants you to completely submit to him in all of our ways, whatever that is for you, whatever that struggle is for you. So we're just asking today if you haven't already, um, we'd love to receive a tithing offering and you can do that online. Um, you guys, online, uh, and you can go to our website, uh, Crossroads Go, um, and you guys can do that in here on your phones. We'll take a minute for you guys to do that if you need to. Um, also, if you're here today and you have a check or cash, there is a box downstairs center that you're welcome to put it in there as well. So I just want to pray over that tithe, if you will. Heavenly Father, Lord, God, we just thank you so much for the opportunity Lord, to be here in your home. God, we thank you for those people at home right now that can't be here with us. God, I pray that you're just reaching in every home today. God, allowing us all to completely submit to you, whether that's in a tithe, whether that is in just service, Lord, to you, whatever that looks like to each person, God, I pray you would just pull it out of their hearts today. God, that at home, that their, their doors would be wide open for you. And God, that here today, that you're just working on every heart in this room and every heart at home, Lord. We've seen you work miracles at home. And God, you work all things for good. So I pray that we have cheerful givers. God, that it's something someone wants to do. And God, they find love in it. And they find love in that your love will be present in all of that. And I just thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. So if you are a first-time visitor, I don't know how many of those we have here today, but thank you so much for showing up. And we want to be able to keep you posted on what's going on, uh, especially now where things are a little bit difficult uh, to communicate with everyone. See our online one word to 97,000 to let us know that you're a first-time visitor. We would love to hear from you. So you guys online, reach out. We want to hear from you, and we want to reach and, and serve you and get to know you. Um, if you haven't already noticed, again, I'm talking to everyone online. We are a family here, and we're so excited, and we're huggers. It's killing all of us to not all be able to just hug without asking, can I hug you? Because I wanted to wear a shirt that they said, I'm a hugger, hug me. <laughs> um, so yeah, for that, and then also, we thank you guys for registering today. Um, those of you that are here all registered to be here to make sure you had a seat, and like I said, we have a full house, um, but we are social distancing and uh, respecting the wishes of our governor and making sure we are six feet apart for those that aren't in our family, and um, also just want to make sure that if you want to reach out to us uh, as far as texting. I believe it is still Crossroads Go to 97,000 to begin receiving event text reminders. And that will lead you, if you don't already receive emails or text, that will get you on our list and we'll make sure we reach out to you with a link so you can register to come into church next Sunday. So it is a absolute pleasure to be here today. I am thrilled to death to see your faces. Um, I'm a hugger. And I don't have anyone high risk, so it's okay for me at the moment. Um, but I love you all, and I'm so happy to see your faces. And um, we will be back with the service in just a couple of minutes. But enjoy your day, you guys.
What up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Like seriously? I I know what I know what's wrong. Gary's coffee bar is not open. That's what it is. That's what it is. Bring back Gary. Bring back Gary. Bring back Gary. Hey guys, just quickly, I want to uh, set the backdrop um, for where we're going to go this morning. Uh, in a second, a dear dear friend of mine who I love and respect immensely is going to come and join us and talk from it. There's lots of perspectives that we could look at in reference to what's going on in our culture right now. And I was talking with Pastor um, last week, a week or so ago, and we were just sharing it. And something he said just really, really just pierced my heart in, in a really biblical, profound way. And as we were talking through the journey that we were talking about, I asked him if he would come, because I can't speak to this, but he can. And in a few seconds, he's going to join us. But, but here's the thing, our outgoing force for our president um, posted this a few days ago, Pastor Glenn Burris. He said this. He said, you don't have to agree with some poli- someone politically to treat them biblically. Oh, that's good. Let's just go home, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we can so get caught up in our politics that we forget that we're Christians first. And so as Pastor Glenn said that, and then our statement is this, we as believers, we're called to build bridges instead of adding to barriers. And so there's a scripture we're going to look at this morning. There's a lot of perspectives that Pastor Ron Bryan could take as he talks this, but I've asked him to speak to a particular one. I want to set the backdrop as he comes so you know where he's going to be coming from for me. There's a scripture in Matthew 5, 38 through 42. It's, it says this. Um, You've heard the law that it says that the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, Offer them the other one also. That's actually in the Bible? Ouch. (laughs) If you're sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give them your coat also. And then it goes on to say this. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for one mile, carry it for two. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. What does going the second mile mean, guys? It's a big question that lots of people ask. Um, Jesus said this, and anyone who should force you to go one mile, go with him a second mile. Roman soldiers could force citizens of Israel or any foreign nation to carry their pack for a mile. In fact, it was Cyrus the Great way back in the beginning that started it as a mail delivery system that he used it so people would be forced to carry the mail a mile and the Romans adopted it. And then they used it because they would, their packs were heavy. They would force other people to carry their packs. And Jesus comes on and really speaks to it in, in that perspective. And Jesus says this. Now, not only do I want you to carry it one mile, I want you to carry it a second extra mile. That was actually four miles. It was a mile that you would force to go, a mile you would choose to go, and then two miles to go home. So as Pastor Ron Brown, Dr. Pastor Ron Brown, comes this morning to speak to us in reference to what we're dealing with in our culture right now and the pressure of racism, what's going on. I'd ask you to filter it through. What does it look like? The question I asked him as pastor, in fact, pastor, would you join me, please? The the question I asked him, welcome in this morning. Hallelujah. (laughs) Why is my stool higher than your stool? Is this this a thing? That that works. That's good. It's a thing. But I asked him this morning, Pastor, there's lots of things we could say. There's lots of things we could come at it. But would you, as a person of a black pastor, because he is, right? Right? Believe it or not. Right? It's just, this is is not spray paint. This is, this is real. This is real. I love him. I respect him. We are family. We're familia. Him and I, not because of the external, but because of the internal in him and the internal in me. That one of these days, Jesus will blow his trumpet. And we will be called to be with him, and he will go with me, and I will go with him, and we will stand in the presence of our Savior, and we will enjoy his presence forevermore. And he's asked if he can come to the Irish section, so I said yes. (laughs) So, Pastor, would you speak to us this morning, because you can, would you speak to us this morning in reference to that one question that we talked about is, what does it look like as a believer, what does it look like for us as a church pastor to go the second mile in reference to everything that's going on. I know by the end, at the end of the service, he kindly says, which I really respect him for, that Rob, when we're finishing the service morning, I'd be willing to sit here and have a and a as a part of our service. And so if, as you have questions later on, there'll be a text that will come up that you can text to, and then we will filter them together so we can ask Pastor some questions in reference to what's going on. So Pastor, I'll get on over to you. Well, thank I, you so again, much. I just want to say thank you first of all for extending 
this this um, wonderful invitation. This is this is quite an opportunity to come out and to meet with the rest of the family. You know, my sisters from a different mister and my brothers from a different mother. You know, I'm just like, but but we all have the same same father, amen. And um, and uh, this this morning and this whole season, um, we we really look at this as an opportunity. This is quite an opportunity, and I love the word about the, I, I just happen to be one of them. I think I'm going to be one of them psychedelic threads, too, that the Lord is going to be using. But I love that. That is true. The Lord is doing some mending. Um, I, I like this, and we talked about this, that uh, so many of us talk about our Constitution. And, and I always thought, do Christians know what their Constitution is? Are you going to go there? We have to go there. You know, okay. so, so Jesus started out, and, and the context that this is taken from was when he was actually giving his constitutional address to the church. And that's Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 is where Jesus laid out what it really, really meant to be a Christian. And so many times we try to take our constitution and superimpose it on, on the word, but, but what is transcendent? What is transcendent? So um, going the extra mile, I'm going to just kind of say this uh, very, very quickly. A few, few disclaimers. Uh, at the end of this message and, and the end of this discussion, I don't think we're going to be immediately transformed unless there's a miracle that takes place. And when I say us, this is not the black guy trying to transform some white people. This is us as a family trying to draw closer to God. And how do we actually do that and pass what I call that final test that we're going to be getting. You see, there are only two questions on the final test. Did you know this? Two questions on the final test, and it's right up on your sign. Did you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and did you love your neighbor as yourself? Amen. And other people have tried to say, well, can I just choose my neighbor? Can I choose? I mean, is, is it okay if I just love who I want to love? Oh, Jesus was asked, and that was answered. When the, when the young man said, well, who is my neighbor? And the Bible says he was trying to justify himself. And, of course, Jesus went off into the Samaritan story, you know. Uh, so the idea is um, the context of, of um, Jesus' constitution to the church was really to help us to understand how to be good citizens of the kingdom of God first, because that's who we belong to. We, we, we roll on to the flag, come on, somebody, the flag of Christianity, and, and a flag is, is more than what people may realize. It's an amazing. I heard NASCAR took down the, the Confederate flag, and people say, well, that's just a flag. It's a, no, wait a minute. It's, a flag is more than, if you're a military guy, how many military people here? If you're a military person, you know that a flag is something that you put in a case and put somewhere else. When you take a piece of cloth that you call a flag and put it on a flagpole and raise it, it now becomes a standard. So therefore, everything that that represents is what you follow or what you ascribe to. So it's more than a flag. It's a standard. So the Lord says he is Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner. Mm -hmm. And so when you take his banner and you say, uh, this is how we roll, then, then that's, that's the direction that we should be going in and for. But this concept, this whole thing called going the extra mile, um, requires something, as Pastor Rob just set it up so well. Many times we have, we have traditionally thought of this as just doing up and beyond. It's more than doing up and beyond. He's calling us as citizens to do this. Listen, to go the extra mile requires humility and instant forgiveness. Humility and instant forgiveness. Not a rationale, not I can't believe I'm carrying this guy's back. I got things to do, man. I got a soccer game. I got, you know. Uh, no, it's instant forgiveness. Humility. And then humility means humus, right? To go down to the ground, to actually, the Lord says, you need to kind of actually see it from that person's perspective. If you're going to be a doctor and you're going to heal someone, you have to understand their particular illness. If you're going to heal someone's hurt, you have to understand their hurt or you're not going to be a great healer. Um, so humility means to humus. If you're going to be a parent and you're going to raise kids and you want your home to be safe, then practice humility. What do you mean? Get down to the ground, humus, right? And look at the ground from the perspective of the child. And you will see the things that a child will see and then... They, your home will be a lot safer. So the idea is humility means to sort of submit, to go below 
what you think is the norm or what you think is acceptable. Just, just get down. That's what Jesus did. He humbled himself. Jesus had no business being on this earth. He's a king. But he came down just so that he could see everything from our, pers his per our perspective and then became, um, on the right hand of the Father, our greatest advocate, where he's now able to intercede for us. So it requires humility and instant forgiveness. You know what I found out? No one likes to be ordered around. Did you know that? <laughs> Somebody told me, this is something I've learned coming to America. I'm from Jamaica originally. You know, I'm an original Yad Man one each, all right? A Yad McComb prop. All right. So, but when I came to America, one of the first things I heard is, be careful. People here don't like to be told what to do. I go, really? God, going to have a problem in the kingdom of God. <laughs> I'm just saying, when the Lord shows up. Here's the other thing that um, uh, going the extra mile requires of us. Transcendence of God's word over our word. God's con constitution over our constitution, whether it's a national, a regional, or your family's constitution, God's word transcends it all. If God says to do it, do it. My rights and my, you know, I should be and my, that all becomes secondary when God says do this. And you go, but God, you do know that. I know. He slapped you in the face. Then, yeah, give him the other cheek. Well, wait a minute. Something's wrong here. No, what's right is God's word transcends. And here's what it also takes. It takes incredible courage. Courage. And you know what is the greatest courage of carrying that extra ma? Here's the greatest part of this courage. Doing it and not being worried about what somebody else is going to say. Oh, come on. This is where it really, because everybody likes to belong, and no one wants to break those super-held, close relationships. You know, this happened in the word, Pastor? And you know who did this? This happened in Galatians 2, 11 through 13. Anybody remember what happened in Galatians 2, 11 through 13? Let me set the stage very quickly. You see, Peter was kind of a scaredy cat. Peter was not known for his courage. Okay, he stepped out of the boat. I give you that. <laughs> but he was not known for his courage. You know, that's why he denied Jesus when it came time for commitment. He was okay, dedicated, but giving up my life? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. And even when Jesus, you know, died, was buried, resurrected, getting ready to leave, John chapter 21, and he says, Peter, do you love me, Lord? You know I love you. He says, you do? You agape me? You love me unconditionally? Lord, I love you like you're my brother. I phileo you. He says, Really? And feed my life. Peter, do you agape me? Do you really love me unconditionally? Lord, you know I love you like a brother. I phileo you. And then Jesus says, hmm, do you phileo me? Do you really love me like you're my brother? I do. He says, then feed my, feed my sheep. And then he talked about how the people were going to die. Right? What it means to be a witness for the Lord. Witness comes from the word machoros, which means martyr. When you decide to stand up for Christ, you may die. Something is going to die. You must be born again, and then something is going to die within you, and it may even be some of your relationships. It will take quite the courage to actually be, no kidding, a recklessly abandoned Christian for the Lord. And so Peter said, when Jesus said, um, you know, follow me, you know what Peter said? Well, uh, what about him? And he pointed to John. Peter was so scared when Jesus was talking about this death. I don't want to do that. And then later on, Peter is out there ministering and hanging out with all the people who he was sent to minister to, Gentiles, where there was quite the division back in the day, Gentiles and Jews. Even, yes, after Jesus came and ministered and spoke so well and tried to get everyone together, but, but there was still that divide, the us and the them. And, 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 and Paul heard of something that Peter did. And it said in Galatians 2, 11 through 13, Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face. This is Paul jacking Peter up. I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. Why? For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles, but when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. 
Um, it requires courage to go the extra mile because you're going to make somebody mad, you know? And then can I just say this one thing and then I'm just going to have you jump back in and then yeah. we'll take questions. I want to keep this thing short, man, because I really want to hear where you are and I'd love to hear questions. I will say this. I do know that um, in this whole experience of being share, sharing and many have called and asked questions and I've asked questions, I realize that our ears are connected to our hearts, right? And our heart is where the transformation occurs. Whoever we are, black, white, or whatever you want to be today, right? So the idea is this. Our ears are connected to our hearts. The Lord says you have, a, have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. So if you have a transformed heart that's spiritual, then that ear will hear very clear the rhema word from God and, and we grow. If your ears are still carnal, then you tend to hear what gives you sensations because it's going to the flesh. It's more sensual hearing. So it goes to the, to, to the flesh. So listen to this. So when you hear things of the flesh, you, you, it moves your emotion. You get upset or you get glad or whatever it might be, but, but it's going to move you emotionally. So if you get moved emotionally by anything, the question becomes, are you hearing with your spiritual or your carnal ear? I realize, Pastor, that there are three general filters, three ears to hear, and, and there are generally three groups of folks here. Not black, not white, all of us. All of us either have this fleshly ear that's either apathetic, which means I don't care. I don't care what's going on. I don't care about you. I don't care about anything. I don't care. I just don't want to hear about it. And then there's the other ear. That's the, the uh, apologetic ear. You know, um, our late good friend, Dr. Ravi Zachariah, has passed away and quite the apologist. But the, uh, the, uh, that, that ear, the, ap the apologetic ear, is one that those are, those are the thinkers. They want to know. They want to read everything and see everything. And they're going back and forth on Facebook and having all these social discussions. Those are the apologetic. And then there's the antagonistic. And those are the ones who are the opposers. And, and the ones who say, just listen, I just want to fight. I just want somebody to be angry at somebody because I want to win. I want to win the argument. I want to feel good about myself. All of those are connected to our flesh. And so if we have our ears transformed, do you know even the ap apathetic, the, ap ap the apologetic, and the antagonistic can also be transformed, and you can be apathetic where you don't care about what the enemy thinks? Now you forgot. You can be apologetic where you get into the word and really see what God says. And you can be an antagonistic. You can have some holy indignation and look at your brother who's saying something wrong and say, straighten up, bro. You know, we got to pass this test. At the end of the day, we need to make absolutely sure when we show up and the Lord says, let me check your transcripts. Looks like you did a lot of wonderful things in your life, but there's a problem. What is that? The final test it says, where's, where's the evidence of your love? Because if you have not love, you have nothing. This, I believe, I believe we're in a season of a test of the Christian. Amen. Season of the test. All right. So I said a whole lot of stuff, and I got a lot, a lot of extra notes, but I want to hear more from you, questions. Okay. Let's have a dialogue, okay. you know? Well, Pastor, let me ask you a question first, yep. and then Mandy's going to come, guys, with a handheld mic. If you have a question, stick your hand up. She'll come to you, and then she'll repeat the questions so people online can hear questions or ask him. But I, I was chatting with Pastor last week in, in just reference to all that was going on. I began a lot of phone calls and a lot of statements, a lot of people, I, I should be here, I should be there. How come you're not saying this? How come you're not saying that, Robert? And I was like, ah, <laughs> I'm going to call somebody that I know that I can speak to this for me. And so I called Pastor and say, can we talk? And he said, of course, Rob, what's up? And I said, well, Pastor, I, we're in a situation where people are coming from all different angles. And one of the questions that was on the, here, some people have sent some questions in already, but, and there'll be a way to text some questions that'll come up on the screen for you. But, but one of the questions I asked him and he answered it was this, is, Pastor, what can white people do to be better understood and support our fellow black Americans in reference to what's going on right now? Oh, um, well, uh, go, talk, listen. Active listening. Um, I, I think that's really one of the first and foremost things. Um, there, there are things that we can actually do, and, and I have uh, five things that, that I, I um, uh, would recommend. This is homework for you. <laughs> Welcome to school. I'm a professor, so you know, here's school. Here's some homework. 
um, I would recommend that you go pray, read, and study the Christian Constitution. Read Matthew chapter 5, no less than five times. I highly recommend that you do that. And don't read it, uh, read it in such a way that, that you are actually, no kidding, uh, hearing from the Holy Spirit. Uh, let him be your teacher. You do know what we have for you today is called showbread. You know, this doesn't change your life. This is called the holy place. This is showbread. So you go behind the veil where the most holy is, where the presence of God resides, and you get rhema. This is showbread. This is the show table. Don't eat this. This is just the depiction. If you really want to know the truth that sets you free, go ask God. Amen. Go right behind the veil, open it up, and say, okay, God, I got some showbread this morning. What do you say, God? And let him speak to you. There's no preacher or teacher but the Holy Spirit. I want you to listen to that very carefully because I know we want to listen to our greater teachers and we want to listen to all our cool friends and all that, but at the end of the day, it's a personal thing. There's only room for one behind that veil, one, and that's you and him. Amen. Get in your chuppah, get in your talit, get in your tabernacle, tabernacle with God, and say, okay, God, Amen. it's me and you. Speak to me. Tell me what you want me. And then the Lord is going to weave you into the thread you mm -hmm. need to be. You're going to come out whole kadah, come on. strife. Come on, somebody. You're going to come out with all kadah. And the Lord is going to go weave some fabric together. Did you seriously Love. just say polkadot? Polkadot. Polka, polka dot, you, know. you can say that because you're from Jamaica. I can so you say can that. Do that you whole can, thing. Can, I don't think I would look good as a polka dot. dot. I really I, don't. I, I, would not I have good. this thing with polka I, no. dot. I cannot see a polka dot tie not by it. Oh, come on. I'm just like, seriously. I just, Where's your I wife? I love it. I love it. <laughs> what else, Pastor, would you speak to that question? So, so also, um, if you are that apologist and, and a great American, we live in America. The Lord says we need to be a part of where we are, right? You know, we, we are here. We don't need to be of the world, but we're in this world. So read, the con read our Constitution. Read the Bill of Rights. But if you really want to put life to that, Here's what I recommend all Americans do. Recommend, because I heard I can't tell anybody anything. I know. I know. It's, just, it's just one of those things. People are like, don't be telling me what to do, but I'm American. You know? and, and we both immigrated here, and we both had to take that test, didn't we? We did. I Ooh. passed. Woo -hoo -hoo. I passed the test, I too. Did. Whoa. And I said, does every American have to know or do this? Here's what I recommend we do in America to really help to give us a much better context of what's happening. Read the top landmark cases argued by SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States. And I would like to more specifically direct you to two landmark cases, Plessy Ferguson and Brown, uh, Brown v. Board of Education. Those two especially. And more poignantly, if you say, I ain't got no time for all of that, okay, then go to the Plessy Ferguson and read the one dissenting opinion written by Associate Justice Harlan. Read that. And, and that was written right around in uh, 1898, and, and it was very poignant and almost so relevant to the times, it, it may blow you away. But, but I recommend that we do that. In other words, continue to broaden our understanding, because the danger of a single story, if you're getting all your information and all the decision-making process from one place, it's not that it's not true, it's that it's incomplete. So broaden your understanding. Turn off the TV. Please, I do not allow one of my students to cite anything off of the media. No media, no, no papers, nothing. If it's not a scholarly place, then it, it doesn't need to be there. And so the, the, uh, if you want some great scholarship on this, uh, the best um, source that I've found is Barna Research Institute. Barna actually has a study on Black Lives Matter, by the way, that they did in 2015. You want to go Barna Research Institute. They're a Christian organization, and this is not junk research. This is good empirical research. At least a thousand people in each study, Christians all over the nation, and, and it's really, really good. So if you want to have that perspective, I suggest that, that you do that also. And um, meet someone different. If you're black, go meet a white person. If you're white, go meet a black person. If you're somebody in between, go meet everybody, you know? But just meet someone. And, and when I say meet them, I don't mean just like hang out with them. Meet them. Just say, just share. I, I just want to hear who you are. And, and, and that way, what that helps to do is eliminate this one word, prejudice. Prejudice is prejudgment. What happens is we judge or we fill in the blanks for something 
We don't know. And so if you, if, if you really want to know, if we really want to know how we can make a difference, and you go, is that important? Uh, 1 Corinthians um, 8 talked about how significantly important that is. Okay, so it was in the context of food, but the principle is the same. The principle taken from 1 Corinthians 8, right? Where, where, um, where, where, where uh, the, the word was talking about, what should I eat? Should I be eating this kind of food? And the person said, listen to this. I just want to, I just want to read this very quickly. Um, uh, food offers to, offered to idols. And he said, um, uh, let's see here. Food will not uh, command us, and he goes all the way down. I love this. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 12. The sinning against your brothers, if you actually um, say, I, I, I'm going to do this anyway, regardless of what you think. Sin against brothers, and wounding their conscience when it is weak. You, when you do that, listen to what he says, you sin against Christ. You see, it's important for us to, and I want you to read this whole thing because I'm just kind of like diving a little bit into it. I'm doing a little cherry picking here. Therefore, and he goes on to um, talking about if, if food causes your brother to stumble, he says, if meat, then I'm just not going to eat meat anymore. It's not about the meat. Amen. It's everything about where do you hurt? And if I love you and I have a passion for the body of Christ, which oh. means anointed one, if somehow I am the one that's hiding or, or covering your anointing for you to do what God is calling you to do, then shame on me. Mm. And so, so I want to make sure that whatever I do, the, 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 light, the light of Jesus Christ shines as brightly as possible from you. And so uh, it's very, very important for us to understand that. So, so meet someone. And then finally, I want to share this one. This is, this is like my favorite. <laughs> Bring your heart's bank card. We used to say bring your checkbook, but ain't nobody got no checkbook no more. I see checkbook, what's a check? You know, anyway. Bring your hearts. What, what does that mean, bring your hearts? You know when you go shopping, you go shopping and you're going to, oh, I'm going to go ahead and go buy a car or a house or whatever it is. You know, when you go, if you leave your checkbook at home or your means of purchase at home, you're probably not going to buy the thing. Bring your checkbook. Many times when you go to school, if you left your your, your conscience or your, uh, your desire to grow at home, you're not going to learn anything. So bring your checkbook. What does that mean? Bring that thing, bring that part of your heart that says, I'm ready to invest. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to change. If you come to that um, store or where, whatever you're going to buy and you don't have anything to buy it with, you're just window shopping. And, and so when we come to church, we ought to come to church, especially with our hearts, bank card, wide open and ready to spend. When the Lord says, okay, it's time to give, and you go, okay, shh. you know, it's not like, well, I would, but I ain't got no time, and I left my thing back home. No, we have to be ready in an, in, in an instant, in season and out, to really make a difference where we are. Uh, so it, it, I, I will say that if, if we make this a one-off, like in the next 10 to 15 minutes, this is going to cure everything in our lives, both you and I, because I've got things that need to be cured. You, need, you have things that you need to be cured. That's why the Lord said he put us together. He specifically designed us with those proclivities or those dispositions where we are weak so someone else can be strong. Amen. And so we don't look at our brother's weakness and down it, no matter who they are. What we do is we look at that, understand that person's weakness and go, I got it. And then you can listen to this. You can be the good Samaritan. What does that mean? You can be touched with the feelings of that person's infirmity and you can lift them up. And you can say, I got it. I, can, I got it. If you're a person that has experienced any kind of hurt, you know what I'm talking about. Don't judge that lady who had an abortion. Go understand. You know, I didn't say you need to get one. I'm saying go understand, just try to learn where, where she is, and in that hurt, lift her up. If there's that person who lost a child, is there that person who has been abused or misused, be careful. Um, at work, we, we were trying to do some sexual assault prevention training and all that. Hey, nobody can be in sexual assault. It's, it's just like one person. Uh, shh. No. Learn. Go understand what it means to be, be victimized. And in such a way, we can cross the street, we can minister to someone's need, put them on, the, on, 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 the, on, the, on the, your own ride, whatever you have, mule or Bentley, you know, whatever you got, you know, and, and you take them to the nearest inn. Notice that Samaritan had to have his checkbook. Yep, amen. 
you got to be ready to spend on that particular person, and you invest, and you say, listen, if this guy runs up any bill, when I come back through town, I'll take care of him too. We have to be that kind of person that I believe the Lord is calling us to be, and then we'll see our, the healing in our land. Okay. Anybody got a question? We've got a lot of questions coming. Anybody in the room want to ask a question? Mandy's available. Um, with the microphone, just slip your hand up. She can come to you and she repeat it. Don't be bashful. I have to have at least two or three questions. So I'm, re- I'm just not just not going to be good. You know, I'm just saying. You know, anyone, any questions? I've got a whole bunch, but I want to give anybody in the room a chance. They may not want to, but hey, okay. Pastor. While people are thinking, let me ask you this question, then, sir. Uh, how do we start the journey of understanding with what someone who is black goes through? on a daily basis simply because of their color? How, how do we, who may not have had to deal with that, that journey, how do we start? I know we can't solve it like you said, but how do we start that journey, Pastor? Um, again, we can start by really just, just doing it from the eternity foundation. First, trial, first thing that we have to do, lost my mic there? First, first thing that we have to do is we have to make sure we're aligned to the cornerstone. If, if you're not anchored to the cornerstone, you're going to be blown and tossed by every wind of doctrine. I'm just telling you right now. So as a believer, as a believer, I can only speak from a believer's perspective, you have to be anchored to the cornerstone. And then from that point, then you learn. Then you, then you open up your heart and you just wait. Let, let the Holy Spirit teach you through everything. Go do a lot of research. I mean, but, but, but engagement and, and fellowship, is there, it's, it's second to none. You know, the Lord says, provoke one another unto love and good works, not, the, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, even more so as we see the day approaching. The day is upon us, and, and we really need to be provoking each other. But, but the starting point is, is really examining where we are and who, who you are. When I came to America, I thought I was black. I, I really didn't realize black is not about a skin color. I'm from Jamaica. And I thought I was black. So I had to be educated on what it meant to be African American. I had to be careful. And they said, dude, you got to be, you can't just, this is not Jamaica. You can't do that. And it didn't take long, six months into being here by getting my first jack up in Nassau County of New York. Ugly experience. Don't want to go into it. But the bottom line is this. I had to learn that it really does exist. As much as I wanted to be apathetic and say, this is America. I've seen it on TV. This is great. And, um, and that was 1981. And, um, and I don't want to even go, in, go through all the other stuff. But, but there's, there's a lot that's in there. Um, and I, I know that I've even heard, be careful, don't, 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 um, don't feed this monster because you're just going to create what is known as um, Pygmalion effect or the self-fulfilling prophecy. And I go, no, we, we, we kind of have to take that risk. Um, and we're going to have to actually... Uh, truly approach and, 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 and meet with folks. So engagement is huge, huge, huge. But listen, it cannot be something that you just do once. This is going to be a continuous thing. So if you ever ha- had to get a heart transplant or, a, or a, a lung transplant or any major organ, how many of you know sometimes you come to church, you need a new heart, <laughs> you know? Um, and the Lord is like, oh, my word, oh, Lord, this heart is so desperately evil. Can I get a new heart this morning? The Lord is like, I got plenty of them. Every morning I will give you a new heart. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Do you know that after a heart transplant, lung transplant, liver, whatever it is, you have to take anti-rejection drugs? You know how long you have to take them? The rest of your life. You see, this is not a one-off thing. This is something we we have to continuously engage. We we older people, I I mean, I'm I'm, I'm older people. Older people like me, you know, yeah, all like of 57, 56, getting ready to turn. You're but, older than me. But, but we have to then learn what our younger people are going through yeah. and understanding what they're being exposed to. We have to understand the influence that video games and school and everything has on our young people. We have to go there. We have to sit down, and that's why I love youth. I go, and, and they think I'm going to be leading youth. I'm like, no, I'm here to hear from you. I want to know what you're going through. Where are you hurting? And what are you going through? And they said, man, pastor, the, the bullying and the ridiculing and the living up to is so hard to deal with. I can't even focus on my schoolwork. And I go, I got it. Wow. Then you can start the healing process. But you got to listen. You can't be, just go to school. and Just, just take the word. Just pray about it. No, there's got to be more. The Lord says, listen, faith without works is dead. So what is that work part that we have to do? And, and we have to engage there. 
hey, pastor, let me, because uh, you're a friend of mine, uh, and we, we're here in Utah, let me bring it closer to home, if you don't okay. mind. Um, one of the questions was, pastor, where do you see or feel the most accidental or intentional racism happens in Utah and our communities? Well, there's some good news there. Um, I've lived a lot of places in this world, and um, the, the first thing that we have to actually do is define racism. This is going to be a great thing for you to do. Just have some fun with it. Really have some fun with it. Go home and say, define racism. What is it? Write it out. Do you know that right now, Miriam and Webster are revising the definition? Oh, wow. Uh, thanks to, or um, one person from Duke University said, um, have you read your definition lately? And they go, no. So they're in the process of rewriting the definition of racism. But it doesn't matter. The, the question is, how do you define it? Because if you don't define it, then you won't know what it is. You, you might go, I'm not a racist. Well, really? If I had a dollar for every time a person came to me, which actually happened in a church, um, and said, I... For years I've known you, but I just couldn't listen to you. And I couldn't figure out why. I thought of every possible reason, and, and the person says, I know I'm not a racist. I know because I love everyone. And he says, but the only thing that was left was the color of your skin. And I realized that I may not be a racist, but I had a racist proclivity. A disposition to kind of like not fully accept. And I go, oh, Cool. It's all good, man. And that's what we do. I mean, it's, 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 it's so important. Now, here in Utah, um, you know, there are a lot of places where you could see um, that existing, um, but I haven't found a lot of direct evidence um, personally to me. Now, it may be because, you know, I carry myself differently. I don't know. Um, when I go to the golf course, I've never ever felt like someone said, oh, we don't want to play with you or anything like that. It's always been very welcoming. But then I do know uh, that my son had to leave Utah um, because he lived in, in Bountiful and um, just tried to get a second job and he just got tired of being stopped every night by the cop mm -hmm. in Bountiful for carrying, what are you doing out here? I'm, I'm, I'm carrying papers. Well, who are you and where do you live? And, and he's like, can I just deliver my papers? And he says, I gotta move. So he's, he moved to Florida. So um, it, it, does it exist? It, it, it probably exists everywhere in, in some degree, in some form. But, but again, if we, if we approach it from the perspective of, oh, I just wanna just fight about it and win an argument over it, then that doesn't serve the purposes of what the Lord called us here to do. So um, I get a chance to speak to, the, to police officers and I go to uh, and share and, and do a lot of, um, of teaching on this, and, um, and, and, and it sort of opens our eyes to see maybe things that we didn't see before. Um, so, yes, that's, uh, it, it, it exists. Um, it, it, it does. I'm afraid to say it does. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, it, it's here. Well, um, I toyed with the idea of asking this question, but I've always promised you 10 years ago I'd always be honest with you and upfront. So I'm going to be. This is a loaded question, Pastor, because I have had... Um, Love loaded questions. I've had backlash. I've had backlash on both sides of it, why I haven't said something or whatever. I have said something. And so because you're black, because you are, right? I am. I'm going to ask you to help me answer it. Okay. The question is this, Pastor, is what are your thoughts regarding Black Lives Matter and white privilege. Okay. All right. So, um, again, this is one of those things where you actually look at the particular perspective and the doctrine of what Black Lives Matter was really, really trying to do. And now, um, I used to be a special emphasis program manager, one of the SEPMs at Hill Air Force Base. We have seven SEPMs by law, the affirmative employment law. Now, that law was established because they actually saw data to suggest that there were inequities. We didn't say inequalities, we said inequities. Whole different discussion, come back, I'll share with that. We do a report, an MD715 report, that we don't share with anyone, but it tells you by data how really imbalanced and inequitable we are in areas. 
Um, so they established these special emphasis program managers to actually address those particular affinities. Women, disabled, black, Hispanic, Native American, and um, I'm forgetting a few. Uh, Pacific Irish? Islander. No, Irish. Yeah, sorry. But, but the only, people say, well, why did, wouldn't he have a special emphasis program manager for, for white people, for yeah. people of, of Caucasian descent? And they said, because the data doesn't show that as being an area of, of brokenness, if you will. It just only points to these particular groups. So, so um, uh, if, uh, as, as far as um, uh, the Black Lives Matter move, movement goes, the principle, the principle of saying, can we stop and actually focus on this for a minute, is sort of how I understand it. Not that all lives do not matter, but that let's just pause for a minute and look at this one particular thing. It's like taking the whole engine of the car and it's saying like, my car is broke. Well, wait a minute, wait, wait. What about, what if, what if just the part of the car was broke? Well, let's focus on that part. So now guess what? Your radiator matters yeah. or your battery matters. But I thought the whole car matters. No, today the radiator matters because it's leaking. It's, you know, does that make sense? So it's, it's actually an opportunity to shine a spotlight on one part. And I believe, doc, even as Dr. King suggested, that, that when you do that, anybody ever heard of the Pareto principle, 80-20 rule? Yeah. So what it means is you focus on 20% of the issues and it solves 80% of the problems. Mm -hmm. So, so if you look at one area that is causing the greatest consternation or, or your opportunity for change, and you exploit that area, it helps everyone in the long run. So before you know it, any other group that's going through any kind of hurt or any kind of discrimination or whatever it is, that particular rule will then apply to all. So, so Black Lives Matter really started there, um, and, and I believe they're, they're growing now um, others have expanded in that, and, and I, I will tell you, I am very, very much a Christian before anything else. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not an Independent. I just chose to be a citizen of heaven, just so that as a minister of the gospel, I can't be skewed by any particular thing. Now, do you mean that I'm not supposed to be a part of No, no, please, get involved. Get involved where you are. I'm just so, and it started with my military background. I'm a retired Chief Master Sergeant in the United States Air Force. And whoever the Commander of Chief is at the particular time, that's who I supported. This was not a question of what their belief or their system was. If the Commander says do this, we do it. It's just how we roll. So, so it became very, very easy for me to be a servant of my Commander in Chief. And when he says, do this, I do this, and I don't do it out of a filter of a Republican, Democrat, Independent, or whatever it might be, conservative, liberal. I just do it as the word of God and my constitution tells me to do it first as a Christian. So, so that's where I start, and so I'm not, I, I, I respect these particular opinions and views, and I look at them very, very carefully. Um, th there are other views out there that if you look at are very caustic, but nonetheless, it's, it helps to sort of learn and appreciate them. I wouldn't recommend that everybody do this, but um, as ministers and people who are into social science to an understanding how people function together, and um, I read the KKK doctrine. It's very interesting, the KKK doctrine and how they started and, and what they profess and, and other groups, other factions, and listening to actually what they started and how they started and how they actually go to get to where they are. So that's one, you know, and then the next thing is, so the Black Lives Matter. White privilege. White privilege, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so. Um, Hi, Pastor. I, I, uh, if I said I never saw evidence of this, I would be lying. There's evidence to suggest that, that there, there is some degree of that, and you kind of sense that depending on who you are or where you go. Um, there, there just is. And, and, but, but we have to, again, no matter whether it's um, whatever the group of the day is or whether the movement is or whether you're fixing a radiator or a battery or whatever it is today, we all need to just become better educated um, and broaden our understanding of, of the different particular views. 
and, and, and just not be so totally ascribed to one thing or another, but just really, really listen to every ple place and, then, and listen to this and then be reasonable. Be reasonable, you know, with everyone, right? Uh, I think that's what the Lord called us to be as, as, as we become those threads that actually weave this blanket together. You've got to understand the nature of each part of that fabric be before you start sewing. Can I get an amen from a amen. seamstress? Amen. On it? You just, just don't take some thread and just throw it into silk and just think it's going to stick or not tear. So you have to be aware of each one of the pieces of fabric that you're actually weaving together. Let me add some to that, Pastor, because you're my friend. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of people watching online, a lot of people here, a lot of people will watch it online. I'll probably get emails, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. But, but and I, what I'm hearing you say that is understanding and taking the time to understand the Black Lives Matter part of it. But, Pastor, let me be, just be honest with you. I have a lot of friends who are police officers. Yes. Who have had their children here, um, who have had the bleepity bleepity bleep beat out of them. Yes. Um, who all they've done is want to defend and protect. Absolutely. Pastor, everything. So what, what, what can be said from a, a, a black pastor's perspective, in the sense I hear your heart about helping it, but I watch my friends who are police officers here in Utah and across the nation right. get the tar beaten out of them. Yes. How, how do you find that middle ground in reference to understanding and not? That's the press I get on people. I come, Robert, you're not Absolutely. vocal about supporting black lives. And I've accidentally, and I'm sorry if you're watching, I'm Irish, so right. I'm not from here. I've said, Absolutely. all lives matter. And I got the crud beat out of me because of it. And I'm like, S what do you do? You don't like black people. I'm like, I have a black pastor friend coming on Sunday. <laughs> of course I like black people. Like, but I keep getting in trouble, pastor, because my heart is... I hear the heartbeat, but I watch my friends get the tar beaten out of them yes. on the streets defending people, and I, I try to find the truth, but I can't find it in the darkness. What would you say to us and help us in understanding that, Pastor? Uh, it, it started with Galatians, where I spoke from actually last Sunday. Where do these war come, come from among you? They come from within, right? Um, how do you do this? Uh, the same way I just um, mentioned, um, I go to a lot of cops and speak with them, when I leave here, I go straight to 12th Street Jail, and I get to minister to the men and the women in that jail. And so, you know, when I speak to law enforcement there and my family members who are law enforcement, really, they're the ones who educate me on, I don't know where they were trained, but we don't do it like that, you know? And so, unfortunately, the danger of a single story is that we have those particular instances um, where, where someone, and, and of course, um, it, it's very real, the data is very real that many cops put their lives at risk every day to do this. Um, uh, likewise, firemen get burned, yeah. but, and that's what they sign up to do. Likewise, military members get on an airplane and we lose limbs and come home. So when we, when we sign up to do this, we have to really understand what we're signing up for and it's not to protect ourselves and to go home. It's, it's literally to say, you know, when I, when I tell my church, um, I'm a pastor, and so I'm not a hireling. And you don't have a hireling here. You have a pastor. A hireling is a hired hand, one who is here for the money. You go, where's your security team and where's that? I go, listen, if, if this guy comes in there, anybody comes in and says, listen, I'm going to shoot somebody today. I'm the first to go. There's no security team that's going to be standing in front of me. As a pastor, you have to know that, that you are going to be the first to die. Um, and so when we sign up, we understand what we sign up for. Now we have to understand, obviously, what law enforcement goes through. And, and a big part of it, you know, there's, there, are, there are a lot of, when you do root cause analysis of how we get to these particular places and how these particular things happen, that's the whole study that's going on right now because... There was a police officer in Salt Lake who was educating me and saying, I just don't understand why cops have to do this or why, and I, that's a cop speaking to me, and I'm like, interesting. And I've heard it from, from, from others, from relatives who are in I, NYPD. Um, they say you know, some very, very similar things. So, so a lot of it is an, is an educational process. We prejudge, prejudice is again, seeing something and making a judgment without all the information. So we don't do that. We don't prejudge. We go and we learn. And then we can't be skewed by just, you know, the, what we call either anomalies or very, very 
um, low instances of whatever may have happened. I believe that it's very prevalent. Uh, what cops go through, huge. But the vast majority of police officers will serve 20 plus years and never discharge their weapon once. Vast majority, it's one of the rarest things to discharge your weapon. Um, so how do we do this? We take care of our cops. We go, we speak to them, we encourage them. Do something nice for them, you know? Um, uh, it, it's, it's, if, if, if you feel mistreated in any way, make sure at the end of the day, if you're a believer, if you're a believer, you go make sure that you do something nice for that police officer. You go, the one who actually beat you, yeah, you do something nice. Or, again, if you see someone attacking a police officer and you're a Christian and you're standing by with your video phone, shame on you. Jump on in there. Yes? Mandy's got, say there, Mandy's got a, she'll come to you. Just tell Mandy the question, then she'll speak into the microphone just out of respect. where all the fires and shootings were. But when I went into the community, um, I realized this is a great community of great people, wonderful people. There's good and bad in everything. I had black firefighters that were my partners and became great friends. But I think what you said in the first place, and this is for everyone, is I went down there with an open heart. I went down there not thinking I'm going to the black community or I want to be friends with black people. I went down there I wanted to be friends with good people. And so my partners and everything else, they were black on the fire engine and everything else. But what was nice is when I would talk to others and say, this is where I work and everything else, I didn't go, I went down to the black community. Or I, I have black friends. And I think that's part of the thing today is, is we look to try to appease or patronize instead of just being good Christians and going down with an open heart and listening because the people that we become friends with or yep. get to know are the people in the heart, mm -hmm. not the color of the skin. That's all I want to say. So, so engagement is very real rather than loving at a distance. We have to really love up close. The Lord says, go fellowship. You've got to get close. Yep. I want to respect your, your guys' time, but I, I, Pastor, I have just one, one more that I would ask just yes. to help us is... Um, what are some, I mean, obviously, and I say this respect because he's been my friend. It's not, he hasn't been my friend for the last week. We've been friends for years. He's I'm been not. here before to speak at he's our church. He's Jamaican. He just don't know it. And you know, <laughs> he keeps telling me he's Irish. He's Jamaican. The first ever Irishman with less than white or more than white. But anyway, but pastor, what are, what are some subtle ways that a white person shows racism against their black neighbors? Oh, um, the most subtle ways is in speech, right? Um, as you, you, anyone know what a what a um, uh, what is it called? A I wrote a note on it. I I, I love this word. I'm I'm a, I'm, a fa I'm fascinated with words. Anybody? Anybody? You know. Anyway, so um, it's it's called a um, what? Let's say uh, stoking. Parapostokin. Anybody know what that is? So, so that's where you say a statement, and you think you know the end of it, but then they change it to parapostokin. So stick and, sticks and stones may break my bones, <laughs> but your words are killing me. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs, right, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So, so the subtle ways that we heard, when, if you look at Matthew chapter 5 again, going right back to the Constitution, where Jesus hit on the murder thing, he wasn't talking about an AK, Glock. He wasn't putting about, talking about stabbing. Or he, Here's what he was saying. He says, you murder each one with your tongue. So we have to understand, uh, did I just take a shot at someone um, and not know it? So, so we know because if we say something and we say something, um, the response is not, you're too sen sensitive. You just need to get over it. That's, if, if your brother hurts, find out where that hurt may be. You, you may learn something. It may be pretty amazing. And that goes for all of us, right? This is even someone who is black talking to someone who is white. They may have gone through some of the most incredible hurt in their life. And you're just kind of throwing out there, if you white people would just, you know, and you go, well, wait a minute. Hold on, stop and listen and say, where, where, where are you coming from? I just, 
You know, and they said, man, I'm telling you, I went, was in this situation, and I got jacked up, and I got high, you know, whatever it might be. And you learn from those particular experiences, and you go, I got it. Now, now I understand, and now I can cross the road and help, and let's get, get each other, you know, care and each other's hearts healed. And, and that's what I believe the Lord is calling us to do. But, but it, it's, um, it, it's so significant, so important for us to um, just, just look at Matthew chapter 5. And read it like you've ne- read it with breath and depth, and just listen to how the Lord started with every person, all the way from the person who was the were the religious leaders, all the way down to the person who was downtrodden and being abused. And He said, "This is how my constitution in the kingdom of God works." So read that; it's so important. Yeah. I want to respect your time, guys. One of the things I want to encourage us to do is. I've had the privilege of, of knowing Pastor for quite a few years, and I've had the privilege of, of uh, meeting his family and being in his church. He's been in our church since so we've taken a journey over the years. And so I, I have a resource that I can call when I get challenged on Facebook that I said something that was racist, and I never meant it because I'm Irish, and I don't know what you tell you. I, I really don't understand. I'm learning, and I, so I call him and go, hey, Pastor, help me in that understanding. And so we're taking a journey as a church. Our heart would be this, and and Pastor can speak to this because uh, someone asked me the other day, and he can fix it because he's like a he's a doctor, and I'm a I'm a patient. But um, uh, I said to somebody, I think they said, how can I get to a place where I'm balanced? And I said, I think, and please hear my heart because I love my Irish culture. I, I really do. I love being an American. I've been an American for about four and a half four and a half years. I'd go back tomorrow and serve in the military if they would let me, if that's what was needed to defend our country from all foes, foreign and domestic in a heartbeat. So I say this from that perspective. I think the danger thing when I say to somebody our day is I think we can be accidentally nationalists first instead of Christians. Mm. I think we have to be Christians first who filter everything who they are through their nationalism and their background. And that's what I do. I love my Irish heritage. I love my American uh, citizenship. I love being an American. But, but I have to filter everything through my Christian filter. And, and so I'm going to make mistakes. I've asked Pastor to, as we walk this out, to, uh, to help me learn from my mistakes. Because mm. I don't know. Because I'm not black. I'm not, well, I'm from Jamaica, so I hear. So that's kind of cool. But, 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 I, but if we could be really careful about how quickly we jump on one another and, and, and presume positive intent instead of making a judgment call that you must be because you've said it, the truth of the matter is we might not just understand it. I'm going to ask Pastor to do something this morning that I didn't prep him for. Good. Uh, but if surprises, if uh, if you're law enforcement this morning, would you please stand? Yeah. If you're law enforcement, would you please stand? Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, come on. Hallelujah. Awesome. 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 Please, always, please stay standing, Sergeant Greenhall, a second. Um, congratulations on your promotion, by the way, sir. Um, Pastor Rowan, I know you're heading to the jail, and, 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 and I, I love all of our police forces, but the sheriff uh, has a, a close place on my heart. Uh, would you do me a favor with Pastor, with uh, Sergeant Greenhall standing? Absolutely. Would you pray over our law enforcement and I ask will. God's blessing Amen. and protection upon them? And then, Pastor, would you pray into the that we would get to a place that black lives, white lives, I'll just be sarcastic, green lives, mm. that they all matter. They matter. And, then, and then that, that we would, if the battery's broken, that we'd focus on the battery, but to beware of the whole car, because if you don't have a car, you don't need a battery, right? right? If, you, you don't need a, if you don't have a, a car, you don't need a radiator. Man. All those things make the whole thing work together. And so, Pastor, would you close our service out by praying over our, our law enforcement with Sergeant Greenhall standing? Oh, I know Zach, I think Zachary's downstairs hallelujah. somewhere with his little one. But would you pray over us and then close our service? Yeah. Pastor's going to be here for a couple of minutes afterwards. If you want to uh, talk to him personally, he's available to do that. Then he has to head off to the jail. But Pastor uh, Ron, can thank you, you so much, sir, for being here today. Would you? Thank you so much hallelujah. for being here today. And Amen. would you pray over hallelujah. our law enforcement, please? <laughs>
guided by the counsel of your Holy Spirit. And we just thank you, Lord, for your presence this morning. Thank you. Follow you. Do you mind standing with me? Um, you know, what we need is power, right? You can't do this on your own. With man, this is impossible. And so I'm going to pray that the power of the Lord's Holy Spirit, we just celebrated Pentecost, but the power of his Holy Spirit would just rest upon us. And if you're here for any one of the sessions that I did um, a few, several months ago, you heard me talk about the seven spirits of God. Uh, it's one Holy Spirit with seven virtues, but every virtue is necessary today, Isaiah 11, 2. And so I'm going to pray that prayer and ask that the Lord would empower us with each virtue of his Holy Spirit. Ready? Uh, everybody heart writing? Right? Ready? Okay, here we go. Father, I just want to say thank you so much for raining down upon us, Lord God. As your word says in Matthew chapter 5, we need to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we cannot get there without power. So thank you for your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord that guides us and helps us, Lord God. I thank you for your spirit of wisdom and understanding, that wisdom that helps us, Lord God, to, to truly make the very, very best decisions, to be obedient when you call us to go and when you call us to do, that spirit of understanding in such a confusing and a messed up world, Lord God. I thank you that your Holy Spirit makes everything so crystal clear. I thank you for your spirit of strength and your spirit of counsel because there are times in our weakness, our flesh, and our sensations overcome us, and we say things and do things that we don't want to do, but that sin that dwells in us, Lord, must, must be suppressed. So I pray for your spirit of strength to overcome, Lord God, that fleshly carnal nature in us. And I thank you for your spirit of counsel that helps us, Lord God, to be wise in everything that we say, to be, to be that person who, who is ready to advocate and to, to, to help and to minister, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, for your spirit of, of, uh, of, of knowledge, that spirit that just does, doesn't help us to be smarter than the other guy, but that spirit of knowledge that draws us closer, that spirit of knowledge that draws us closer to, so that we can see clearly who you are. And that spirit of fear, not the phobo fear that was mentioned earlier, the one that we, you said fear not, but that theosabia, that fear where we deeply respect and honor and listen to you. Because when we fear you, that will be the beginning of wisdom. So I thank you, Lord God, for helping us, Lord God, to just stand still. And allow your Holy Spirit to wash over us with these seven virtues. Now I just pray, Lord God, that you may do something mighty in each and every heart and life. If there's someone that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray this is the day, Lord, they, they would say, come on in. Lord, I know I need to abide with you and you need to be, abide with me. There's, I, I, I can't just allow you to be that guy that lives down the street anymore. You have to be daddy. You have to be Abba Father to me because without you, I cannot do this. So I thank you, Lord God, for that, for entering into those hearts, Lord God, that have been so distant for so long. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now may the Lord bless. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon each and every one of you and be absolutely gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his amazing, unadulterated, never-ending, sustaining, fulfilling, complete, awesome, life-giving, life-changing, life-preserving, life-sustaining peace. Amen. Shalom and amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Hey, uh, just, just, just quickly, because um, Pastor said it, so I can say it again. I said it before I got in trouble because I was one-sided, but he's black, just in case we're not sure. He actually said it, and I want you to do it. I'm biased because I'm privileged to serve with Tyler as uh, one of our chaplains for our Weber County Sheriff's Office, but he said it. Please, you see a police officer in uniform. If you know one's out of uniform, please pause for a second. Go love on him. Go shake his hand. Go buy him a cup of coffee or Jamba Juice. And just that, that's not one-sided. He actually said to do that, so that's okay, right? And so I think we should do that. Our law, our law enforcement officers in this moment need your encouragement. 
because they feel like crud. I won't say the other word because there's children, but they feel like crud right now, and they are broken. I I had the privilege of buying a a sergeant uh, undercover detective guy, one of those guys, the other day, a cup of coffee in a coffee shop, and he just started weeping and said, Rob, I'm sorry. Like, what are you sorry for? Please, right now, he said it. Because he's that color, so he can say, I said I was biased. Not biased at all, but right now our police officers need to be loved on and encouraged and supported because they're doing, 99% of are doing an amazing job of defending and protecting us. Guys, as we leave this morning, do me a favor. This is mathematic. You know, if this side of the room, if you want to go out the stairs where James is and go down that way, and they are half, if you wouldn't mind going through the family room, we can, there's a lot of people in here, so we end up being bunched. But if you could just respect one another, if someone wants a hug, give them a hug. If they don't want a hug, just lovingly don't give them a hug. I know that Bridget said we're huggers, and I'm freaking out because I can't hug everybody. Like, I'm like losing my mind. But thank you so much for taking this journey with us. There'll be a registration. Mandy's doing an amazing job to help us walk through what our governor's requests are. And we're going to keep honoring him. We're going to work through the summer to see what it looks like for us to open up more and more and more. So thank you so much for your help. Thanks for being here this morning. Would you guys show your appreciation to Pastor for me, please? Have a good afternoon. Enjoy yourself and put suntan lotion if you're not in the sun because this boy here will probably get burned. But anyway, have a great day, guys. Okay, God bless. Thank you.